I'm so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this organic reaction. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. Nitrogen containing heteroaromatic scaffolds are very useful in the pharmaceutical industries. And in this reaction, we're forming an N-fuse pyrolo heterocycle. And this actually comes from work published back in 2012. So if you're interested in checking out this work, it comes from a paper published in Organic Letters in 2012. The volume number is 14 and it begins on page 6056 for those interested in checking out more in depth into this study. Because it's a really cool transformation in which we're using palladium catalysis in order to complete this transformation. So for those of you also interested in organometallic chemistry, this should be really interesting for you. And in fact, this mechanism, I'm actually gonna draw a catalytic cycle so you can see how taking just a little bit of this palladium allows us to make tons and tons of these types of molecules, which is really one of the perks of using organometallic catalysis. And typically we start by assuming that we have some amount of ligand, which is why this capital L with the subscript N is written, just to indicate that there's some amount of ligand that's coordinated to our palladium complex. And specifically, this is going to be palladium in the zero oxidation state. So one of the first things that happens is actually going to be what's called oxidative addition, where the aryl iodide will come in and the palladium will actually insert in between the carbon and the iodine position. Additionally, I'm going to go ahead and say that the carbon monoxide acts as a carbonyl ligand and does ligand association to the metal simultaneously. Whether or not these two happen independently is kind of irrelevant. So what I can draw then is what this palladium is now going to look like, where there's going to be a CO ligand attached to it, which is a very common ligand in organometallic chemistry, as well as this aryl group, as well as the iodide, because remember the palladium center has inserted itself into that carbon to iodide bond. And for those of you who have never taken an organometallic course, this is what's known as oxidative addition to insert the palladium metal in between this bond and also ligand association where the CO group will come and bind to the metal. And what will happen next is called migratory insertion where this CO group is actually going to migrate and insert itself in between the palladium and the carbon bond contained in this aryl group. And this is actually a really common transformation for things like hydroformylation, which is a common way to make these carbonyl containing groups using transition metal catalysis. So following migratory insertion, the next product of our transformation is is going to be again some amount of ligand attached to this metal as well as now we're going to contain this CO bond inserted in between that aryl group and then we still have the iodide contained as a part of this organometallic complex. And now I should mention that oxidative addition as the name implies actually oxidizes the metal by a factor of two so palladium zero will, would have become palladium two plus and following migratory insertion it actually still remains as palladium two plus. So even though the total number of electrons of this system would have changed the oxidation state of the metal would not have changed. And if you're interested in electron counting or determining oxidation states of metals, I actually have videos that you can check out about organometallic chemistry. And from here, what will happen is this alkyne, just like we've seen in previous Mechanism Monday videos, will actually come and bind to the metal center. And this can occur through the homo of the pi bond, but then also be susceptible to pi backbonding donation, which will weaken this carbon-carbon bond, which is why it's so useful in transition metal chemistry. So we can assume that this aryl group, which remember contains this nitrogen containing heterocycle located at this position will actually come in and I will draw in the rest of the molecule as well which contains this pivolate functional group as well as the alkyne located at this position and then the phenyl group is located here so what ends up happening is you get a coordination of that group to the palladium center through the homo of this pi bond and as I mentioned this actually weakens this carbon carbon bond which is why these types of coordinations are so useful in organometallic chemistry because now what can actually happen is that this nitrogen lone pair can actually come and attack this carbon position and when it does that it will fully transition this bond which was previously a dative bond between the pi bond and the palladium to being a full-blown bond and what's more is it will also serve to kick off our halide and in doing so it's actually going to maintain the oxidation state of this palladium metal center so then hopefully you can see how we're starting to generate this fused heterocycle. So now when I redraw this molecule, we still contain this nitrogen containing heterocycle located at this position. We still have this pivolate located here, which is also, remember there's a hydrogen on it as well. And now we have an alkene because we have attacked 
the nitrogen to this position and the rest of those pi electrons were used to make a bond with the palladium metal center, which again is still in the two plus oxidation state. And then still remaining attached to that palladium is gonna be our carbonyl compound, which was the arrow group was the R chain. And then remember there's still some number of ligands attached to this metal center serving as a support of electrons for the palladium metal. And now you should notice is that this nitrogen has four bonds to it, so it's actually gonna be positively charged. And this is important and also why we need this base. So our nitrogen can containing base can actually come down and deprotonate this hydrogen, which is why I drew it in in this structure. Because this will actually make these electrons come down to form a new carbon to carbon double bond and actually move over these pi electrons, giving us a neutral nitrogen position. And additionally, you'll notice that our final product has a carbon to carbon double bond located there as well. So then the next step of this catalytic cycle is going to contain most of this product, where we have still containing our fused heterocycle, which remember now is going to be neutral because there's a carbon to carbon double bond located at this position. Here we have our palladium metal still attached with our carbonyl group located here from our previous migratory insertion. Some number of ligands are attached to it and then we still have this five-membered ring that is closed at this position where the phenyl group is coming off of this carbon. And as was true in the previous intermediate, there is still a carbon to carbon double bond located here. So then there's only one more step that remains in order to regenerate our catalyst and also give us our final product. And that's what's called reductive elimination. And it's actually the microscopic reverse of oxidative addition. So remember in oxidative addition, we inserted the palladium metal into this carbon to iodine bond. So now what will actually happen is that these two carbons will form a new carbon-carbon bond and that'll give us our final product. And you can think of this as kind of like these electrons coming over to this carbon and these electrons going over to the palladium. And this will serve to liberate our palladium catalyst, which will allow it to undergo many more of these catalytic cycles, which is why you only need a small amount of this palladium catalyst in order to do many types of these transformations. So remember, in this catalytic cycle, the first step is going to be oxidative addition and ligand association. This can occur in either one or two steps, but either way it generates this palladium 2 center in which it is coordinated to a aryl group as well as the iodide because it inserted itself in between that bond. In addition, we've also associated this carbonyl ligand. From here, this would undergo migratory insertion in which the carbonyl inserts itself into the metal to carbon bond. Subsequently, coordination of the pi system to the metal center allows us to weaken this carbon-carbon bond, making it susceptible to nucleophilic attack. This would fully form a coordinated bond between carbon and palladium and also liberate the iodide. Subsequently, use of a base allows us to deprotonate this to form a fused heterocycle. And then finally, reductive elimination allows us to regenerate our catalyst, which is a necessity of catalysis, and also produce our final product. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic reaction. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.